Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending your valuable time with the ADAPT 2030 channel. Biden tells power plants cut. Pollution 90% are shut down. We saw the same thing in South Africa. Now cutting power 10 hours a day, possibly. This blends right into the C40 cities. And if we look at South Africa, how many of those in that gigantic continent are on the program? Climate crisis took a couple days off for the coronation. Look at all the CO2 in that. 82% of Berliners said no thank you for the zero referendum. Time makes the case for making Earth Day a religious holiday. What would an Earth reverent belief system look like? Uh, cultish. The birth of a new religion. Perhaps we could do it under the full moon. Paganism coming back. And one way to look at all these programs happening across the world is something just like this. Take something fully functional and start to disassemble it and destroy it. Although, you need the destruction to bring up a new system. Or maybe a new roof will go on this pavilion. You see the parallels? At least some sanity in Berlin. 82% of Berliners refuse to support the referendum of net zero. They already saw the degradation of lifestyle when the natural gas was cut off. They're not going to go any further down that route. Speaking of routes, the parade route. Did anybody watch the coronation? I guess the climate crisis took a few days off. Remember, rules for thee, not for me. Now, jumping over to South Africa, this is such an interesting area because it is the, one of the breadbaskets of Africa. It produces a huge amount of grains that are exported into Africa. But at the same time, it seems they're on the forefront of the C40 cities. As South Africa beats climate goals, blackouts to slash emissions. What did that mean? I highlighted it for you. Daily rotational cuts of more than 10 hours a day are limiting emissions. And as we look at the Presidential Climate Commission from South Africa in a quote, we reckon we are well within the range of meeting the targets. So that's the measures they're going to, to meet the targets. Now, nationally determined contribution is kind of a new phraseology that's thrown out there versus something on the global edge of things. And here we are, the 14th largest emitter that's going to have a gargantuan effect on the climate as soon as they start limiting. They're 14th largest. So if we look at C40 cities, global network of mayors around the world are united to confront this crisis. And reading a little bit deeply into it, linked everything below so you could follow this huge amount of information on this site here. It's got all the keywords, scaling up, global movement, facilitating access, and everything else. But the cities involved in this, uh, I included the list here. We'll start with Africa. But Africa is such a gigantic continent with how many umpteen countries. But look at how many are centered in South Africa of the initiative. Then we only have Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Ethiopia, Senegal, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, and Kenya that are one city involved. How is it that everything is so focused in Cape Town? Unless you're cutting losses and you know that that will be reduced in crop yields because of ozone depletion or onsets of grand solar minimum crop losses, going to have to firewall something off. Morgan Stanley warns commercial real estate is headed for a crisis worse than 2008. It's no longer a black swan, it's a flock of black swans. There's a banking crisis, commercial real estate, de-dollarization, rate hikes, and persistent inflation. BRICS is the hottest ticket in town with an additional 19 countries looking to join and move away from the dollar. Mention the ADAPT 2030 channel, you're going to get some first class service. Patriot Gold Group offers the no fee for life IRA or your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver on qualifying rollovers. 888 Five four six seven zero two zero. Call to get your free investor guide today. And now on with the video. Here we are, North America and Europe, the list. But over in Europe, Netherlands, twice, such a small area. It's not gigantic like Germany or France. 
But to be two cities inclusive in that, wow. And what's happening over there with the farm closures? I wonder if those are related. South and West Asia, mainly focused in India. As you can see, you got Bangladesh, Arab Emirates, Pakistan, Jordan that are not in that India group there. So it's more of a list of which countries are not involved. And Central Asia, most of that's in China there, a glimpse for you. Now, if we jump to Latin America and Oceania, we see a couple cities, Mexico, a couple cities in Colombia, and the lion's share is all centered in Brazil on that. And if we look at New Zealand, Vietnam, Australia, all taking the places here in Oceania. And it's really interesting. Now, you could overlap that with the rising food costs from the FAO. Now, some of the food costs are approaching 30 40%, which is causing civil unrest because people are getting hungry, they're angry that their food prices are so high. Now, if you dovetail that into an area where food costs have not risen above 10% and they're not included on that list, like the country doesn't even have a single city in that C40 initiative, then those might be the areas that would outlast this push a little bit longer. And it's just a different way to look at spots. You could choose if you're looking toward the future, you know, because I have a lot of people coming to me about investment, you know, what are the emerging markets that have either the opposite parameters with massively increasing inflation and also in fully 100% into these initiatives, which you know we're going to crash first, reassemble, start with the ashes and then rise up faster than those on the inverse with low food inflation and are not participating in the program. So there's like an A-B column running in tandem and parallel. So once you start to overlap that information along with, you know, where the ozone depletion events are, what the height and altitude of the crops are, where the ozone might strike that with the grand solar minimum cooling prehistoric and historically have hit the crop zones once you start to mash that on the gis sets then then you start to get a really good indicator there's a fair few nations that people are uh, looking at that point for either moving to or investing in and if we look at the top emitting countries china right there wow you could add all the rest of those and i don't even think that would equal china but we find South Africa way down there in the little green box far right, along with Mexico and Brazil, Turkey. But the elephant in the room, China boosting new coal power projects, 2022, 23, 24, announced and pre-permitted. That's the big yellow line, construction underway is the big red line, and nobody's talking about that. Nobody's over there. Nobody's pointing fingers. I wonder why. Oh, wait, the bricks. I get it, yeah. You call them out, you're not invited to the BRICS. And from the BBC, climate change too important to be left to personal choice. And if we look at the carbon output per person on this list here from one to seven, Canada taking the lion's share. And wait, what has been happening in Canada? Oh, that is being knocked back by the day. So who's next in line? Oh, the USA. And we look at these other nations here that you keep hearing they're in such turmoil with their bonds and the money and the unemployment and this, that, and the other for every economic indicator. And it is the top seven right here. Magically overlapping or what? Because in the same article, they give you some ideas on how you can uh, save your climate footprint here. Live car free. Avoid one round trip transatlantic flight per year. Buy green energy. Eat a plant-based diet and recycle. If I had to choose one of those, uh, I'm going to go with recycling, I think. All right. Hey, I'm doing my part. Also, in the same article, it talks about from the World Bank, no less. That last chart was from the World Bank and this one as well. Economic behavior. They're going to have to increase the cost for intensive activities and goods to try to dissuade you from doing that. So 5, 10 X increase in price. And then look at the bottom directly from the International Monetary Fund. Social norms, they're going to, have to be a new definition of fair share. And they're also going to have to set new acceptable levels for personal emissions. So, you know, when it's already at the World Bank International Monetary Fund level, putting out these types of articles, and then one of the things that the IMF was mentioning that the BBC pulled out here, CBDCs will probably come out of the gate as a personal carbon quota system and mass adoption will be driven through universal basic income delivered along the rails of social credit, digital ID, and might I add my own digital rationing card when food gets lean. If you're looking for symbiosis in introduction of systems, you got it right there. 
again, from the IMF reporting on this one, what's the digital identity? What is it? And it's not really the digital ID. It's about examples of where it will be required, quote unquote, for you to continue life in basic service as we understand the world today. Employment, healthcare services, an organization, you have to do for anything, banking. If you want to make a payment and see, this is where you, you, I'm going to split the hair, making payments. If they don't allow you to make payments, you can't continue to pay for your mortgage. If you can't pay your mortgage, they'll swoop your house. Somebody will be in there to buy it at pennies on the dollar. But then all the other stuff like paying taxes. What if you don't have that digital ID and you want to pay your income tax? You can't. And you can see the incremental creep in this. So as you move forward, I mean, everything I'm talking about has been out here for what the last two years, but the IMF really trying to squeeze it together for us now, showing a very, very clean roadmap of where it goes now. And this whole debt ceiling thing with the United States dovetails straight into it. So, you know, all these factors that seemingly are like one dot over here, one dot over here, they're all really combined and tightly knit when you look at it in a wider landscape of the interconnectivity. So what does the debt ceiling do for movement into all of this C40 cities and, uh, you know, rolling this out worldwide, especially the central bank digital currencies to get everybody on a universal basic income if they lose their jobs, etc. But to do anything to be able to keep your premises or pay your taxes, which is also part of keeping your premises, uh, you're not going to be able to do that unless you're on the, the new digital ID system. How would one stay out of that system? Uh, you know, looking through all this information, uh, you're going to have to share and have somebody else hold that in their name and you just kind of stay there as a tenant or whatever. I'll pay you the rent, but you're the one who has to do all the si sign up with the IDs and things. And lo and behold, the same time, the Rollout Time magazine, thank you for this article. The case for making Earth Day a religious holiday. So what would an Earth reverent belief system look like with Earth Day as its center? Cult is my first choice if I had to use a word from the English language. And it's quite interestingly written in terms of how to start a new religion based on all the other religions that exist currently on our planet. It's going to be a hybridization slash movement back to paganism. We must make nature central to our belief system in Earth Day, Earth Focus, ceremonial days. Wow, where have I heard that before? Are we proposing a whole new religion? Not quite sure, but the way it is, absolutely yes. Maybe an old one. See, they're giving it away. They're reverting back to paganism. Again, that takes us away from divinity to worship the earth, but you can't worship the earth if you're all out in it. It has to be in a city, and your worship will be you get a special one day to go out into nature and come back. While one day a year you will be allowed to visit nature. It seems like that I'm reading between the lines loosely and interpreting it myself, but I think that's what articles are all about is interpretation. Perhaps it's a new birth of religion because the arrival of these, of the old, the ancients are returning to bring us a new religion. If you wanted to know where this was from, Heraklion, ancient Egyptian city that sank more than a thousand years ago. Archaeologists found this at the bottom of an ancient temple in the ruins. The walls of the temple were carved with women holding small humanoids. Which brings it full circle in why I did this video. Biden asking, or I should say telling, power plants to cut pollution by 90%. So we can already see what the pollution would be. The GHGs, which will bring us down to 10-hour blackouts, just like they have in South Africa. And how would our nation function at that point? I don't think it would just say in. And Ransom Godwin and myself, we talk about this every Thursday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, right over on Revolution Radio, where we stream out live to all these different platforms. You can find those on libertylinks.io forward slash solar minimum. I post that link in the community tab just before we go live, about half an hour. Also, storable foods, you know, during these tumultuous times here that we're moving into, anything could happen any day of the week. And what happens if your food access is cut off or limited? How long would you be able to keep everybody fed, healthy, have enough calories to continue to do daily chores and set out a garden so you'd even have more food? All these links are in the description box below. This is a great way to support the channel. I thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.